Okay, uh, so Mika said, you know, this is the kind of talk you have to prepare for. And I said, yeah. And then he said, so you're preparing. And I, and I just kept lying to him over the, <laughs> the uh, and I knew that this was going to be one of those things where, you know, stuff happens, you know. So we had the Bernie, I, I just spent a year on the Bernie campaign. Uh, it was, you know, one of the most, if not, okay, thank you. All right, now we know what kind of, what, you know, got some supporters out here. I wasn't sure. So, uh, and uh, it was one of the most intense years of my life, if not the most intense. And um, it was one of the most beautiful years for, for all of us that, that participated all over the country, whether we were a volunteer running a phone bank or uh, somebody running a state or somebody in like my role. Uh, I joined the campaign in the beginning of July and uh, I kind of took this job, it was very fluid at the time, and I took this job of, kind of created this job of being responsible for the later states, you know, the 46 later states where they don't put staff down on the ground. And, uh, and there was, you know, and, and by the way, this is um, uh, one of the, has anybody ever cried at a uh, PDF talk before? Yes. Yes? Well, then I'm not gonna do that. But, uh, <laughs> But I was a little worried that it might happen, but you guys are making me feel good. So, you know, and I, I, I was like, how am I going to really prepare for this talk when the political situation is going to be so in flux? Uh, and, and, you know, just two days ago, we had the whole mood of the campaign really changed in a fundamental way. Now there's all these news stories coming out trying to dissect the campaign and see, um, you know, in the way that, that happens when campaigns lose. Uh, and, uh, and they always get it so wrong. And so I realized, talking to people last night and this morning, I realized that what I should do with this time is to uh, answer the question that a lot of people have been asking uh, me in these couple days, but what was it really about? Right? And, and also like talking to some people who, were not, who are not Bernie people here, they're like, what is it about? Why, what are all these people, you know, why are they so mad at Hillary and stuff like that? They're not mad at Hillary. Uh, this amazing, you know, the, the title of this is, is uh, How We Can Unleash the Power of Many. And I think Mika probably wanted me to talk about tools, and I will in one of these nine and a half minutes. But, um, <laughs> but, but I want to be clear about what unleashed the power of many in this campaign and how hundreds of thousands of volunteers all across the country uh, poured their lives uh, into this campaign. They worked for a year or more in a lot of cases to, uh, and really worked like 20 hours a week, 40 hours a week, even 80 hours a week, hundreds of thousands of people. And why did they do this? What unleashed that power? And I'll tell you, it's that people are getting screwed. Uh, they are the real wage in this country. Here's the abstract way to say it. The real wage in this country has been falling for 40 years. The real wage in this country, if you look at the bottom two thirds of Americans, the bottom two thirds of income earners has been plummeting for more than 40 years. But what is that? That's an abstraction, right? And a whole lot of us live in capital city. You know, that's a Hunger Games reference, by the way. So, uh, you know, we, you know, this, I've been living in New York off and on over like two and a half decades, and it's totally capital city now, it feels like. And, and it's, it's easy to lose sight of what's going on out there. And I actually live in, my wife and I moved to her hometown, uh, which is a tiny town in the Ozarks. And uh, she doesn't see that we're living in like the Ozarks you know, slum, uh, but we, what we are, we live in the, you know, there, there are roofs collapsing and, and the people just have to throw uh, big blue plastic tarps over their roofs. And there was a meth operation that actually got shut down in the um, empty house across the street from us. And I'm the only person, I, I might be the only person on the block, uh, or one of the only now, I think, uh, that, that has a job. Um, people are struggling just to be able to get to work, right? Because if they can't keep their car going, uh, they can't get to work, and then they go down a spiral uh, that, that, that leads somewhere really terrible. And, you know, like, uh, this is happening to, obviously, to tens of millions, really, you know, hundreds of millions of people in this country. And those were the people, often, who were driving, the people dealing with that, people trying to survive what's happening to our society and our economy. Those were the people, to my surprise, I'll admit, uh, that were driving the Bernie campaign. And I'll tell you about one. Uh, her name is Sarah, and she lives in Kansas. And she ran a phone bank twice a week at the Overland Park uh, Public Library in Kansas, uh, outside of Kansas City. 
And she, she spent two nights a week and, and countless hours around the week making this happen. Five to 10 people would come down and they would do work talking to Bernie voters in Iowa, New Hampshire, the Super Tuesday states as it rolled on. And her story, I, I got her story eventually. And, and I could tell you a similar kind of story about hundreds of people that I got to know over the last year. Uh, you know, she and her husband, they, they joined the military as a way to get some skills, hoping to get a better job someday. When they got out of the military, they found that they did have skills, and those skills earned them uh, slightly over minimum wage in an administrative job and a, like, you know, a local uh, manufacturing job. Um, they made ends meet. Uh, they wanted to start a family. She got pregnant. She got laid off in her eighth month of being pregnant, and then her husband got laid off two weeks later. They had just bought a house, and, uh, and it was a very, very modest house, or so they thought, and then the housing bubble burst. This was back in 2008. So then they found that they couldn't make the payments on the house, and they couldn't sell the house because it was underwater. And, uh, they, but they struggled, and they survived, and uh, he took a loan and went back to school to get some more skills and found that he was only able to make slightly above where he was before and still periodically got laid off. So during, this Bernie, during the Bernie campaign, when she was doing all this work, she was trying to start a business. That was her new strategy for survival. And, and this new strategy had become possible because of the woman that lived next door and the two of them uh, were, came up with this idea and they were able to sh share childcare. You know, they'd send the kids back and forth while each one of them was out there doing the work, which was kind of how we did the Bernie campaign. People shared the load on these little teams, right? And they were, they were she, was, she was getting this business off the ground, but it was, it was a real struggle, right? And yet, she was jeopardizing the success of this business and, and, and her family's individual well-being by spending all this time working on the Bernie campaign. And I was like, why? Why would you do that? And she said, there's no other way that we can get out of this loop unless a whole bunch of us get together and take what this opportunity that's Bernie, that Bernie is giving us and pushing it forward. And, 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 I, and as I talked to hundreds of volunteers over the last year, I said, what? What, what, do you really think Bernie is gonna make a difference in there? And m just about all of them said no. They said he's not gonna get shit done when he gets in there. <laughs> you know, this is why Hillary's line wasn't really working with them, right? So, uh, because they were well aware, right? And what Bernie did, what Bernie did, God love him, what he did is, is as a senator, using his position, he was able to step out there knowing that he was not the ideal a presidential candidate, right? He was a little too old, too hand wavy and weird, and uh, <laughs> he was a socialist. And you know, uh, you know, a lot of us, pro probably him, I don't know, thought that uh, his whole that whole attempt might just be a thud. Maybe that's why he waited so long to do it. And but when he when he came out and you know gave us this stump speech, and and the other thing I said, you know, I, I asked people, you know, what is Bernie actually talking about that's got you so fired up, you know? Uh, well, he's talking about jobs, and he's talking about free college education. I was like, is that it? That's the whole vision? And they said, well, that is, who's, what, when was the last time a presidential candidate got up there and actually talked about, you know, let's rebuild American infrastructure to provide some jobs and something like free college tuition, right? And remember Sarah's story, they, they went into debt. They were, the, the college, going to community college and getting some extra skills was their only way of surviving. That was something really tangible for them. So with this little vision, right, like Bernie wasn't actually giving us a big vision about how to rebuild the American economy and reform our political system. You know, uh, he was talking about stuff he wanted to do, values. He was kind of giving us a little puzzle piece, a li one little jigsaw piece of, this, of, of what, what could have been or what might someday be a big holistic vision about how we totally reform our political system, totally reform our justice system, right? Totally decarcerate, get the two and a half million people out of prison uh, that should not be there. Um, and, and totally switch over to 100% renewable energy. We know we can do that. We know that it's physically possible to do that. We could do it in five, six years. Uh, and to rebuild our infrastructure and to build the missing industries in this country that uh, we should have been building like all the other major industrialized countries. To, and what if we did all that? What if there was a vision for all of that, right? Think about how much harder people would fight, 
right? And, uh, and so I think what we just saw on the Bernie campaign was that people are so hungry, they're suffering, and they're so hungry to get this one, that even one little corner of, of a vision like that delivered by a candidate who even his most ardent supporters were not sure was the most incredible messenger and even, and, and even whose most ardent supporters did not think uh, would be able to actually execute on, on that vision all alone, right? Well, what everybody was saying everywhere I went uh, was, uh, well, well so, sorry, j just imagine, right, what could happen with um, a, a, a political movement that was not just going after one office, but all the offices. And with a whole vision, the whole thing, right? What we learned was that when Bernie suggested some of these things which were radical, free college tuition, you know, like in the 60s, right? Radical, you know, something that could never possibly exist, like in every other industrialized country, right? Radical. And Pete, when, when, when he suggested that, people went wild. And we had hundreds of thousands of people working like crazy, right? And it is amazing. Um, <coughs> The, tool, the tools and the, the, these new tools and technology, I would love to say that we were the ones uh, and that my team provided all of these tools and all of these special things to people all across the, the country that enabled them to make something like 200 million calls to, uh, to voters in Iowa, in New Hampshire, in the Super Tuesday states. Uh, but, and we did provide some pretty cool tools that did let them do a lot of work. But what really happened, because there wasn't a whole lot of preparation uh, for the Bernie campaign, you know, he kind of walked out of the Senate and said, let's run. And, um, and that was about a year ago, right? And so there, the, what really allowed people to come together in all of these communities to actually show their teeth and, and show you and show everybody, show the establishment that, that they meant business, was this whole change in, in the structure of the people. Um, this change in the fabric of what, what holds us together. And people were able to organize on Facebook, on all these other social media platforms in a way that was not possible in, even in 2012. Uh, and there are new tools that allowed them to actually form really well-organized groups uh, like Slack. And uh, I had used Slack with software developers and somebody, some volunteer was talking to me about Slack one day and I was like, there's no way this 60 year old nurse you know, in Topeka is telling me about her Slack team, right? But in fact, she was, and there were hundreds of Slack teams all over the place uh, using Slack before we did on the campaign. Uh, and so they were using these tools, they were able to build something that was about, I don't know, a hundred times more powerful than I would have guessed a grassroots movement that just sort of sprang into life when a guy walked out of the Senate and said, let's do it, guys, could have possibly been. And so I was blown away by that, and I would really love to work with any of you uh, who are game on taking it to the next level. Uh, let's not just walk out and say, hey, let's go and see what the people do and what tools they happen to use. We've got so much, collectively, we've got so much experience and so much uh, skill among us. Uh, let's put together that big vision and let's get a whole bunch of amazing people who are the perfect messengers and who are really committed and let's build the campaign of our dreams using all of the tools that are built and that haven't been built and that a lot of the people that you're hearing from today are building uh, right now. Let's do that. Uh, so thank you.